Hi, I'm Dan Branton. Welcome to the Connection Podcast Series. Today we are starting a six-part series where we will be looking at various aspects of digital printing within the corrugated box industry. I'm delighted to welcome our key speaker on this, uh, Pat McGrew, who is a digital in, uh, evangelist, as she uh, likes to describe herself. Uh, she knows everything there is to know about uh, digital print uh, when it comes to the corrugated industry. So, Pat, welcome to uh, the session today. Um, I'd like to probably ask uh, the first question is, uh, let's look at workflows. So maybe you'd like to give us a little overview. What is a, a workflow within the digital industry? So the interesting thing is workflows are everywhere. They're not just for digital printers, they're for analog printers, uh, converters have converting workflows. Uh, you have a workflow in your business. Every, everyone has a workflow, but we don't always think of it that way. And when we start talking about digital printing workflows, what we're really talking about are all those repeatable, hopefully auditable tasks that are used to get a job from the point of sale all the way through to the point of delivery to the end customer. And in the best workflows, there are tasks that are automated. There are, um, there are goals in a workflow. A workflow should have a goal of efficiency. And one of the reasons we talk about workflow is to try and bring uh, all the people in the process, all the team members in the process to an agreement of how tasks should be passed one to the other to minimize loops. I won't say eliminate because that's a little optimistic and ensure that you're not leaving money on the production floor because of inefficient processes. And, and so, Pat, when we start looking at the corrugated industry, because obviously it's um, traditionally a very analog uh, process, um, is it quite difficult in your experience to get uh, businesses to transition into this digital workflow model? You know, I, I think it depends on the nature of the, of the, the culture in the business. I've been in businesses where uh, they were actually very facile. Uh, they already understood uh, that they needed to automate uh, certain front-end tasks. They, they had very tight control on their inventory. There was a very tight connection between the information that was available to the sales teams uh, in terms of, you know, uh, what's in inventory, what's not, what would, what would extend a time. Uh, and, and those organizations that have, are already using software tools to help guide the business and guide the workflow typically move into digital printing, which ex it, it, what it does is it adds the number of tasks, right? When you start bringing digital print into the, into the talk track, but because they're already automated, adding additional automated steps is, is taken on board much more easily. When you look at somebody who's been a traditional converter, maybe, you know, the, the traditional uh, brown craft box guy who now has acquired a digital print device and is trying to figure out how to make money with it, um, they struggle a little bit more trying to build good automated workflows mostly because it's not in the mindset yet. And those guys may take, you know, 18 months, 24 months before they're really comfortable with how the work should move from step to step. That includes this digital print component that they're not used to. So let, let's ask a uh, possibly a funny question, but you know, if you're moving into digital print, I mean, does a corrugator really need a workflow? Well, yes. And, and the reason that they want, they want to start thinking about workflow in, in very concrete terms is because it's going to save them money, right? First of all, you're moving into digital workflow. And so you've made an investment and presumably you have made this investment because you've done your due diligence. You believe there's a market you can serve. All those things are fabulous, but the, the work does not flow itself right? It needs some manual intervention in order to bring all the pieces together. So now you're trying to sell digitally printed 
corrugate, which might be, you know, store displays, it might be uh, primary and secondary packaging, it can be all sorts of things. But in the end, you're going to be able to need to get from a designer's concept of what they want, which may be new to a corrugator, right, all the way through to getting it printed, getting the approval that the colors that you printed are the ones the designer and their buyer wanted, that can be a whole new experience when you're not used to dealing with color and how color lands on substrate. And then you've got to get it the rest of the way through the process through finishing and cutting and delivery. So if you don't have a written workflow and one that your entire team agrees to, you will wind up with jobs going in circles over and over and over again, and you will never know what that job costs you to produce. And that's why you want a workflow. Now, Pat, you touched on something uh, interesting there in terms of costing and, and estimating. Um, how does one uh, start that process for estimation in the digital uh, print environment? Because it's so radically different from the cost centers that, that a traditional box plant would be used to within the, the analog print environment. So, um, you know, how should the, the industry be looking at uh, how they go about estimating? Look, estimating is the thing that's going to help you identify your best path to your highest margin. So you need to identify every step that a job will have to go through to get from point A to point B. It's uh, the, the best path to understanding the value of estimation is to start talking to the vendors who sell true digital print estimating programs. In fact, you may already have one installed, right? You, you may have one of the big suites installed from one of the primary vendors. They're, you know, the, the folks at ESCO are lovely, the folks at EFI are ugly. There are lots of them out there that you might want to talk to. Find two or three people who are selling estimation programs and have them walk you through all the things those software tools can do. And then you will start to understand how that maps into your production process. So, so you mentioned um, some industry leading names there uh, in terms of the, the sort of MIS, um, whether it's EFI, whether it's KiwiPlan, ESCO, et cetera, et cetera. All of them are great, um, yeah. But how do you, um, how do you, do you go about sort of fixing the whole estimation and the quoting um, to reflect that transition into digital uh, printing? First, you have to know what your what your costs are, <laughs> and that sounds so basic. It sounds like, well, of course, I need to know what the costs are. Yeah, but so many places that I've walked into, and maybe you've walked into, they actually don't know what the cost of every element of the product they're producing is. They have uh, maybe at one time in the past they've done the the deep. Uh, calculations, you know, my liner costs this, my machine costs this per hour to run, uh, I've got people, their burden costs are, maybe at one time they did all that, but in most places that I walk into today, they don't actually know what their cost of producing brown craft boxes is, let alone what is going to happen to their overall cost when they start talking about adding digital print to it. So one of the things I always recommend is that you take a look at all of the product that you have in inventory and look at your sales catalog. So start to think about, take one, take one of the products that you're trying to sell or your sales team's trying to sell and, and look at everything that touches that product. And you may discover that your costs are out of alignment. Uh, the, you may not realize that you've taken on board some inventory cost additions, right? That the substrates that you're buying today cost maybe three, four, five, twelve, twenty percent more than they did the last time you updated your estimating program. Because how an estimating program works is it's a table, right? It's a table of all your costs. And then a little elf sitting inside your computer takes all those costs when you say, this is what I need to estimate. And it uses that to build your cost and to give you a view into your margin. But if the underlying tables aren't up to date, your costs will never be right. And sadly, that's the state in most places. Okay, so, so if we take the industry standard MIS uh, solutions that are out there, um, 
what kind of information should we be capturing um, to ensure that our, our sort of scheduling and our cost estimating is accurate in terms of corrugated? You know, digital so print? think about it this way, Dan. The um, Think about everything that touches. So not every estimating program works the same way. Not every one of them captures information in exactly the same way. It would be lovely if they all did, if they all use the exact same underlying industry standard tables, but they don't. In the end, you want to make sure that the estimating program that you're using uh, would have an automated connector to your inventory control system so that as inventory is moving in and out, as raw inventory is moving in and out, that estimating program is automatically updated and nobody has to touch it. If yours requires manual intervention, uh, one, go talk to your vendor and see if there's an automated connector. And two, if that's not possible, someone should be assigned to make sure those costs are up to date all the time. But estimating isn't just the cost of the substrate, right? It's your people cost, which maybe you haven't gone in and adjusted. Again, many of them have automated connectors into the HR system so that the cost per person assigned to a job is known. Those things impact your margin. The cost of other things. So remember, when we get into digital print, uh, we might be talking about printing in full color. So now we're talking about more ink on the substrate. We're talking about more processes. Maybe we're adding some additional lamination. Maybe we're adding some spot varnish. Maybe we're doing some fancy things. Maybe we're doing additional fancy cuts. How are we estimating the cost to get that done and the cost to get the, the cutting done and the, the rest of the finishing done? your best estimation programs allow you to identify all those things and to automate a lot of it but if your estimating program is missing some of those bells and whistles this is the time you go talk to your vendor okay well i think that neatly wraps up uh, pat looking at the uh, the aspects of workflow uh, estimation and uh, a rudimentary look at mis as well so um, pat thank you for your time on this and we'll look forward to uh, connecting with you again uh, next week when we will roll out the second part of the podcast and we'll be looking at uh, the onboarding of uh, new jobs and looking at how we compare digital print versus flexo and litho so until next time thanks ever so much indeed